Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This video is going to be a quick update on everything that we've got going on at high voltage so far this year. And it's going to look at the fan torque sensing motor as well as the 27 motors because we've been working on upgrades for both of those. I know there's a few people that have been looking for a bit more information, so this video is going to do that. As well as that, I'm also going to run through some of the other things that I'm working on as well. I've got quite a few videos now in the pipeline for you all to see, and it's going to be good to get back to making some content. While I chat about things, there's also going to be some more footage from the Cottonmouth e-bike for you to see. Okay, so start off with the M635, which is a, it's a bit of a bittersweet story at the minute, because it took the fan a really long time to put a torque sensor into what is effectively the BPSHD with a bit of a cosmetic lift to the design. We've had a few of these to work with over the past few months and both Greg and Mike have put a lot of effort into getting the torque sensor running really smoothly with the ASI controller, which is not, not an easy thing to do. And you can see a, a clip of it running here. And this clip shows the, the pedal torque input as well as the average cadence. All right, it's not easy at all to get the torque sensors working nicely with the ASI controllers. Uh, you can just ask CYC on that one. So not only is it working great when you combine it with a tuning app, it also allows a really, really fine level of control to make adjustments and have the torque sensor work and feel exactly how an individual rider would like. Certainly way more control than anything else there is out there. Mike actually spent a good deal of time creating a nice compact piece of electronics that cleaned up the torque signal so it was actually more accurate than when the torque sensor was being used with the stock controller which kind of makes the next bit of it particularly sad in that it's been confirmed now from multiple reliable sources that the fan have pulled the production of the m635 at least for the time being and I don't know the exact reasoning, so anything I can come up with would be would be a guess, so there's not much point. So I, I guess there's some hope that it might be resumed in the future. Uh, I know the, the industry as a whole is in a bit of a downturn for this side of things. So, you know, if there's an uptick, then maybe, maybe they will resume it, but I don't know. Uh, it's kind of frustrating because we wait years and years for a torque sensing BBSHD and it's available for less than like two or three months. So if you have one, it's going to be pretty rare by the looks of things. And it's a shame because it, it was running really very smoothly. I suppose it, if we look for a silver lining, you could say that the, the knowledge and the skill with tuning torque sensors will be a valuable thing going forward. The, the cotton mouth bike that you can see here, with the lightning rods motor is going to have a torque sensor at, at some point. It is what it is. Um, we have zero control over a third party motor manufacturer and everything you take on like this has an element of risk to it. Uh, in terms of the two seven motors, we've been looking at doing a similar thing with some upgrades to that. The 1500 watt DMO one was a particularly good candidate because it had that 40 to one reduction allowing for comfortable pedaling even at the higher RPMs you get with the 72 watt battery. And I have quite a few videos of it running with the back 855 and it does actually really well. The torque sensor tuning though is proving to be an issue with this one though. And torque sensors um, use something called a Wheatstone bridge circuit. And they use that to interpret the changes in resistance caused by the strain gauge in a torque sensor. And usually this circuit is part of the torque sensor itself however with the the two seven motors both the dmo1 and the dmo2 we're pretty sure that this circuitry is part of the controller instead which means that when we remove the controller to use an external one the ability to interpret the signal is lost and the asi controller doesn't have the ability to interpret the microamp variation that's being sent which leaves us needing to essentially scratch build a Wheatstone bridge or locate a substitute that's compact enough that would work. And we're limited in the resources that we have. So right now we really need to evaluate if this will be a good use of that time. The, the DMO one, although it's become more popular, it's still not really that well known, certainly not as well known as the Buffang BBSHD, for example. So we're not ruling it out, but it does need to be 
carefully considered. In terms of videos and things upcoming for me, there's going to be quite a lot more on the Cottonmouth, which is which is the footage that you're seeing right now. There are going to be a full suspension frame, which should be in testing pretty soon, and I have plans to build out a full suspension version once that's done. My main focus right now is going to be doing some road legal work with this bike, so full light signals, and I want to see if I can challenge the local legis legis legislative bodies here and get it on the road officially. I have a trailer design as well to show you that will be getting welded up. Um, my buddy's now got a welder and he's getting pretty good, so I'm going to do something that lets me put a very large, I think about 80 amp hour battery on it and go on some super long rides, take equipment with me, maybe go for an overnight fishing trip, that sort of good stuff. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I was interested in getting the, the car pure ride head unit set up on the bike as well getting some navigation and stuff going without having to stick my phone on there the whole time. I have a few interesting things with batteries to look at. I've been working on something looking at battery use and safety for some time, so that's going to be fun to share with everyone and see what people think. Towards the end of the year, there's also going to be some much better premises to shoot the videos in, as well as work on bikes, so I'm going to look forward to showing that to people as well. There's also a boatload of other stuff that's been on the back burner. I've got to catch up on lots of videos. I, I wanted to do a follow up on the high boy bike that we've been using uh, for quite some time. There's unfortunately been a lot of stuff going on so far this year, which I'm, I'm not going to go into, but it, it's prevented me from doing as much video work as I'd like. It, it's something that I enjoy, but family and earning an income have to come first. And on, on that note, I, I really, truly appreciate everyone who's continued to support the channel with, with likes and memberships, and thank you so much for that. And hopefully I can get back to being a bit more consistent with things. It, it's really great to see the channel grow to over 10,000 subscribers, and the Discord community is, is approaching 5,000 members, which is, which is awesome. I, I love chatting to people on there. So I guess I'm sorry it's not better news really with the m635 because i know there were people excited about that one and and the same with with the 27 and and running the asi controller um it is what it is like and i don't believe in in sugarcoating things and pretending there are problems when when there are problems uh so anyway that's where we are and we'll see what happens and onwards and upwards basically cheers